If you've been thinking about picking up one of the industry leading noise reduction softwares, this is the right video for you. In today's video, I am comparing DxO's PhotoLab Deep Prime noise reduction with Topaz Photo AI or Topaz Denoise, either one. And I'm gonna show you guys which one is better, which one I think is better for you. I'm gonna show you guys how I use both of them and I'm gonna include a link down below where you can pick them up. Hello everybody, my name's Austin James Jackson. I'm a professional landscape photographer based here in Southern Utah. And in today's video, I am stoked to share with you guys the best noise reduction software. Now, a little while back, I tested a few more noise reduction softwares than what's in this video, and I honestly found that Topaz Photo AI was superior to all of them. So I left all those out of this video, and I just wanted to compare Topaz Photo AI with DxO, because I've heard a lot of people were saying you should have compared it to DxO. DxO is so much better. DxO is going to be better than Topaz. So I wanted to compare them and see once and for all which one is actually better. So in this video, I'm going to start by showing you guys using both of the softwares, how they both look, how they work, as well my opinion on them. And then we are going to compare four photos that I've already denoised in both softwares to see which software performed better as, uh, for multiple different kinds of photos. Now, if you're going to buy these softwares, uh, you may notice that DxO PhotoLab 6, uh, which is where Deep Prime lives and works in, uh, it's going to cost you $219 at full price, whereas Topaz Photo AI is $199. You've got uh, Topaz, which is more meant to just be a plugin. There's not really any other editing there. Uh, and you can save a little bit of money by just buying Topaz Denoise AI, which gives you all the denoising properties. However, I do recommend you pick up Photo AI. Even though in this video we don't talk about the other features, it does do other things like sharpen and resize, which I think are well worth it to just buy Topaz Photo AI rather than Denoise. But if you want to save some money and just get the denoising, you can get Topaz Denoise AI. It's $99. It's a lot cheaper. Now, DxO Photo Lab 6 is designed to be a full service editor. So it brings your photo from raw to finished file. Um, um, and by doing a ton of different edits. Now, uh, in this video, I'm just showing you how to use the denoising technology, but if you do want more of a full service editor, you don't wanna use Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever it is, and you just want the denoising, then you might want to look into PhotoLab 6 because this gives you everything, it gives you cataloging, full editing, everything like that. So the two softwares are a little different in that Topaz is a plugin, whereas DxO is more of a full editor, but I wanted to compare the noise reduction in both of them because obviously a lot of you guys are out there looking for the best noise reduction software. So we're gonna jump right in there. I'm gonna show you the two softwares. Let's go ahead and get started. Here we go, guys. So first things first, I wanna show you how to use each of these softwares. Then I've got four different photos that I've denoised in DxO as well as here in Topaz that we can compare and look at the difference to really tell you guys which one is better, or which one has worked better on at least the four photos that I've tried. So first things first, we're here in Topaz Photo AI. Now how this works, uh, I've put this image in here as a raw file, as a .dng. So it's going to remove raw noise and then you've got a few options as well. Now Topaz Photo AI is pretty cool because not only can you remove the raw noise, but you could sharpen, recover faces if you have a face in your photo and enhance the resolution. Now on this photo, I'm just going to remove the raw noise. So when you load this in, it takes a second to load because it uses an AI model to basically figure out where the noise is. Then you can actually click this box down and adjust the strength and the detail. Right now it's using what's called autopilot settings, which is just like automatic selection essentially. So um, when I turned on to remove the noise, it automatically selected 30 as the strength and 26 as the detail. Now this is really, really great because I love things that are just automated and it's going to select the best amount no matter what, or at least what it thinks is the best amount. And then if I go ahead and zoom in and I find that I wanna change it, I can pretty easily do that. Now, when you are here looking at this photo, you can actually slide this left and right. You can see we're removing a little bit of noise and maybe you can't see because you're watching this in 1080p or lower quality. Uh, so for that reason, let's go ahead and zoom in. Now here in Topaz Photo AI, you're gonna zoom in down here where it says fit 50%. You can click that we can go to like 100 or 200%. We'll go to, let's go to 200 for the sake of this image. Now, every time that you either move the screen, so if I click and drag like this, or every time you zoom in, it's going to have to like re-render the preview. Um, you can see there it's updated. Now, as I slide this bar, you can see to the right of the bar is the noise reduction. To the left 
is before. So left is before, right is after. Now, if you open up Topaz Photo AI and you don't have this view, click this right here. It's gonna give you the best option in my opinion. You can click this if you want comparison view left to right, uh, looking at the same exact thing. But personally, I like the slider. It's very nice to use. It feels really good and it's like very satisfying to slide it. So you can see it's done a really good job. It's removed mostly a lot of this color noise that we have and made things look nice. Now, if you wanted to go in here and do the sharpness as well, you can check that box. You can check if you want a standard sharpen, a fixed lens blur or fixed motion blur. And then yet again, it's going to select options for you. You can definitely do that if you want. You can see when I checked it on, it does a pretty good job. But in this video, we're mostly just looking at noise. So I'm not gonna talk much about the sharpen. Just wanted to mention that that is an additional feature for those of you that do wanna pick up Topaz Photo AI. Now here in DxO Photo Lab, we're gonna be using their Deep Prime XD. Um, and this is an option that you have on all of your photos. It's really nice because you don't have to like launch a plugin. So if you're editing in DxO, you can do all your basic adjustments here and then just flip right over and do the denoise here. It's nice to be built in. DxO is obviously a full service editor. It allows you to do a lot of different things. Whereas Topaz is just a plugin. You can't really edit your photo in Topaz. You can only make corrections. So you're gonna be using DxO to actually edit your photos. Then you can actually do the denoise here and you don't have to have a plugin. Just the difference, depends what you're using. If you're not using DxO for editing anyways, then this might not be that helpful for you because you'll still have to launch DxO as a plugin. Now up here, we have choices for denoising technology. They've got high quality prime, deep prime, and deep prime XD. Essentially, this is like good, better, even better, and best in terms of quality. So if you just want a fast render, you can just go to high quality and it'll render it quick and send it out fast. But obviously for the sake of photography and my photography, at least I always want the highest quality. So I do deep prime XD. Now you have the option, uh, you have a lot of options here. You can see uh, it's not quite as easy to use as Topaz Photo AI in my opinion but you do have a lot of options. So the first thing that you probably wanna do is either zoom in your image. Um, I usually do so either up here or using Command Plus. I'm just gonna go to, let's just go to 200% because that's what we did on the other photo. If you wanna use the magnifier tool, you can click on the target here and you can select what you wanna magnify. You can click on that and then it'll appear in this little box. That can be nice because then you can like see a smaller area easier, but I just prefer to zoom in and look at the image as a whole big on the screen. Just because I'm reducing noise, it's something I wanna be further zoomed in for. So now we have some options to reduce a ton of stuff over here. And we'll just start from the top and work our way down. Usually what I like to do is make sure that these are checked on. So you can see how it's like a magic wand right now that has no magic on the top. You wanna to click it again so that there's magic because that makes it so that it automatically chooses the settings. And you wanna do that again for dead pixels. It's gonna automatically choose how much luminance and how many dead pixels it's going to remove works out great. Um, and then you want to go down. Uh, you can do lens sharpness if you want. Uh, I don't have the lens profile uh, downloaded here, so I have no lens sharpness. But if you download your lens profiles, you can do some lens sharpening as well. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at that. Uh, in terms of deep prime, this is all that there is for denoising is these features. But you can, of course, come down and do some other chromatic aberration and sharpening things. You can check these boxes if you wanted to do some chromatic aberration. Again, you could just do the automatic choices here. You could go down and you could do an unsharp mask, whatever you want to do. There's tons of different options. So that's how you use this software. Um, and if you want to turn off and on the denoise, you can simply check this box. It's going to take just a second. So you can see that the denoise does a really good job removing the color noise. So that's how you use uh, DxO Photo Lab here to reduce noise. Now let's look at what we've all been waiting for. Let's look at the comparison. All right, so I'm using Photoshop to look at the comparison. I simply, uh, all that I did from both of those softwares is exported the photo, and then I brought that photo as a layer into Photoshop just because it's the easiest way I know to stack a couple photos on top of each other and then toggle the layers to see the before and after. So I've got Topaz and DxO as well as the raw here. Let's just zoom in using Command Plus. Okay, so first things first, I wanna to toggle these eyeballs to look at the raw photo. This is the raw photo, the DNG file, straight out of the camera, no edits. And you can see that, let's actually zoom in one more time. The noise isn't that bad. I think this one was shot at ISO 800, so it's not too terribly noisy. Let's see what DxO did. So DxO has done a really nice job here. Maybe we'll zoom out one more. DxO, compared to the raw, has done a really nice job. Everything looks good. It, it reduced a lot of the noise up here, which is very important because you especially don't want noise on the spots of your photo where there's like bokeh or blur. So that's looking pretty good to me. And then let's compare Topaz. So Topaz, similar, 
as well. You can see that it's processed the colors just slightly differently, but it's also looking pretty good. We've got the raw compared to Topaz. Now I want to compare Topaz to DxO. So right now you're looking at uh, Topaz and now you're looking at DxO. We'll zoom out one. You can see both have done pretty much an equal job on this photo of removing noise. I can't really see like places that I would probably look for noise, it would be up here. So we've got DxO, Topaz, DxO, Topaz. Both are very similar. We also wanna make sure that it's not like softening other areas. So if we zoom in here on the shoelace, we've got DxO and Topaz, both very similar. And you can see when I zoom out, the color rendering was a little bit different. DxO kind of kicked in a little more contrast there, whereas Topaz didn't. So both look really, really good on this photo. Let's go ahead and look at the next photo here. Um, and on this one, I actually, since the photo was shot so dark, I didn't want to do any editing to it, um, but I did just throw this exposure layer on top just to brighten it up so it's a little bit easier to see. So we're going to zoom in here. And yeah, we'll look right here. And I'm going to hide these layers. So we've got the raw file. You can see it's terribly noisy, really, really noisy raw file. I think this was ISO 3200. And as you saw, I shot it really dark. So when I brighten it, it's going to get even noisier. We'll do DxO first. DxO does a great job removing the noise. It's pretty much noiseless, I would say. I mean, there's still a little bit of noise in here, but it hasn't really killed any of the sharpness quality. So I think it looks fine. And Topaz, which has also done a pretty good job. Now you can see uh, DxO really kicks in a little bit more contrast on the export there. Uh, this isn't something I'd be too terribly worried about because when I go to export the photos, in this instance, I was putting a raw file in, doing my noise corrections, and then I'm exporting the photo. Whereas normally you would be doing some editing, so it's not gonna make too much of a difference if you actually do some editing on top after that. But you can see it does make a difference uh, in the raw file. And Topaz, DxO, Topaz. So both are just very, very similar again. And we'll look at the photo as a whole, Topaz versus DxO. Just a little bit more contrast in the DxO file. Now let's go to the next photo here. Uh, this one, once again, was like ISO 3200. It's pretty dark. We're actually gonna brighten this one as well. I'm just gonna grab a quick exposure layer just so that we can see a little bit easier. You can see there's really a lot of noise. We've got a little bit on our subject up here um, and a lot in the blurry water here, which we definitely don't want. This is the raw file you're looking at. So DxO, you can see here, does a pretty nice job. Um, subject is looking pretty good and everything looks pretty good on this aspect, I think. We'll toggle this one more time. And you can see the colors maybe are getting kind of muddy here with this denoise. So let's see how Topaz does. Topaz, very similar. Uh, the colors are a little bit more muted. The uh, Topaz is kind of kicking out a little less contrast, but you can see the two photos are very, very similar yet again. And we'll see, we're looking at Topaz right now. Now we're looking at DxO. So very, very similar. And we'll look at our model's face here. Once again, very similar. I almost think the face looks a little bit better on Topaz, but maybe that's because there's less contrast. Um, yeah, I think it's looking pretty good. So once again, both very similar. So now for the final test here, I ran this really noisy, really, really noisy uh, night sky image. And I'll show you guys the raw file. I think I shot this at ISO 20,000. Uh, not 2,000, 20,000, 20 and three zeros afterwards. You can see how noisy this one is. So this is obviously quite a tall task to ask for the noise reduction software. Let's look at how DxO stacked up first. You can see DxO did pretty good. The photo is looking pretty good. They removed just a ton of noise. I mean, wow, that is just unbelievable. I would have never expected a software to be able to do that, but it's looking pretty good, I would say. Now let's look at Topaz. So Topaz maybe came in just a little bit behind DxO in this particular example. You can see the foreground doesn't look quite as good. DxO's is looking a little bit better. Maybe DxO's is even overcooked. So if this is something where if I was actually editing this, I might go back and reduce the noise reduction in DxO because I'm not a huge fan of that. But Topaz definitely struggled on this one as well. But still, compared to the raw file, it has done quite a bit. 
So you can see both software is very, very similar. Both do a nice job. One last look, Topaz versus DxO. DxO, once again, has a little bit more contrast kicked in there, but overall looking very, very, very similar. All right, guys, that is a wrap. As you can see, both softwares perform very, very competitively. They honestly both work great, and I think either one is a great option. Now, for you personally as a photographer, if you already have a workflow that you like and you use Lightroom or Photoshop or On One or Capture One or whatever it is, you already have that whole workflow down and you don't want to have to reinvent yourself, pick up Topaz. Uh, Topaz is going to be the way to go because it's just a plug-in. You simply send your photo over there from whatever software you're editing in, and it'll send it right back, and you can continue your edit. Now, if you're a photographer that maybe you want a new workflow or you want more of a full service software, then I would recommend maybe picking up a DxO because this allows you to do a lot more edits and other things like that. Now, in DxO, there's not as easy of a way, I don't think, to resize or sharpen like there is in DxO. And then where Topaz is lacking in the editing sliders and stuff like that, like DxO has, they do have things like sharpening, which allow you to fix blurry images and other AI technology in Topaz Photo AI. Ultimately, it's mostly just meant to be something that fixes anything that's wrong with your photo and it does it really easily. Whereas DxO is that full service editor. So a lot of you guys might like the full service editing. Um, but yeah, long story short, I think that both uh, noise reduction softwares are great. They are very competitive, both work great. And I'm gonna include links down below where you can pick up both of these products. I'm not being paid by either company to tell you this. I have affiliate links, so if you are gonna buy it, please click my links. It's not gonna cost you anything else, but it does give me a very small kicker for making this video and bringing awareness to you guys of these really cool softwares. I wanna thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. If you guys have any more questions about the software or any other software you want me to put to the test, leave a comment down below. I'm always happy to hear from you guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.